Where is Spike at? Spike. Bring right the mic here. closer. Right behind the column. Right here. Spike. Come here, Spike. Yeah. Rich, get me closer to the mic. You can't hear you. Okay. Spike. My pal. We rebuilt this caboose. Yeah. Could not have done it without this man. I'm going to give you just a little bit of history on the caboose. We're all hot and everything. I'm not going to go a long time. This caboose was in service for one of 60 cabooses on the Florida East Coast Railroad. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, I'm touching it, literally. Yeah, it's all right. Touch it. Built in 1925 by the Magar Car Company in New York. It was delivered in October of 26. And was in service all over the FEC system, including many trips to Key West on Flagler's old overseas railroad. When the cabooses got phased out and they started making new metal cabooses out of box cars in 1965-66, they were phased out, scrapped. This was one of the last 10 or 12. It was on a scrap line in New Samara Beach. This is Louise Hamilton, who founded the Florida Pioneer Museum in Florida City. Needed an attraction for an old section foreman's house that was moved to Florida City. They needed something. They wanted a locomotive. They didn't have a locomotive. But the, the railroad suggested, how about a nice bright red caboose? So they had her come to New Smyrna Beach. She picked the one out, happened to be in the middle of the string, 715. I have pictures of them all in, in the scrap line. The car was taken to the shop. All the brake system completely reworked. Uh, I took several pieces of it apart and it looked like it was brand new out of the factory. Uh, we had a problem with a cylinder that blew out this morning, but that'll be fixed. And it was headed uh, south on a train in January of 1967. Came to Hialeah Yard. My father, C.A. Chuck Beal, 45-year engineer on Florida East Coast, happened to work the Homestead Local the day that it went to Florida City. He took it the last time on rails to Florida City where it was unloaded from the main line by a crane to a flatbed taken to a piece of panel track at the Florida Pioneer Museum where it sat on static display until October of 2012. The caboose was going to, uh, I, I had an affinity for that old caboose, his dad moved it down there and he took us down there on Sundays to see it. I took pictures of it, I took measurements of it, I, I made models of it. And when it fell in disrepair around 2008, 2009, I made inquiries as to what was happening with this caboose. The people in charge said, we've been looking for somebody to be a project manager and restore it. You're it. <laughs> uh, I had a full-time job. I didn't, I didn't need that job, but it was going to get scrapped if I didn't. So they told me, all you got to do, get three quality bids. We'll take it from there. I got three quality bids. They didn't take it from there. They let it sit for over a year. When I made inquiries, they finally said, we're going a different direction, we're going to scrap it. Unless you want it, we'll give it to you. I took it. It was mine. I had no place to put a 54,000 ton, 50, yeah, 54,000 pound caboose. No place. Contacted the Gold Coast. They said, if you can get it moved here, we'll take it. Got the railroad, Florida East Coast, donated the $6,500 for trains, the truck, we brought it 21 miles up here, mostly down 117th Avenue. From Avenue to 117th to here. It was placed here October 1st, 19, uh, 2012. Looking for donations. In all those years, we got maybe eleven, twelve thousand dollars to a very friendly, wonderful donor stepped up. So we decided to go about rebuilding this. The original people screwed us over. Took a bunch of money. We're suing them now, but the donor still kept forward, and I ended up with the right guy for the job, and that was Spike. And thank God for Spike. Thank God we didn't get the first guy. So from January 7th a year ago until 7-15-21, coincidence, pure coincidence, 7-15, July 15th, we worked just over 18 months restoring almost every last about the only pieces left there's three doors that's original and the i the uh the 
what ice and water bed right here on this end. That's it. That's the only thing that's original uh, wood wise. So it was taken down to the frame, it was sandblasted, it was painted with primer, two coats of really good high quality black paint, and we ended up framing it all up and this is the end result. A lot of sweat and hard work, but I'm very proud of it. I know Spike is. And uh, it'll live on hopefully another hundred years. So anyhow, thank you all for coming out today. Uh, friends, I recognize almost everybody here. And uh, thanks for those who contributed. Spike, thank you again. And rear engine.